Today we're going to examine some Laplace transform properties. We've already used the transform tables, but there's another table of properties that we're going to show you. And the three topics are, first of all, that the Laplace transform is linear, meaning scaling and superposition apply. Second, you can solve differential equations with zero initial conditions. And in the time domain, this is equivalent to what we call the convolution property or convolution integral. And then finally, we're going to talk about how to solve differential equations with non-zero initial conditions using the derivative property. Here's a typical Laplace transform table, and the properties are shown on the left column. And then here is shown the functions in time. And then in the right column, this is the uh, corresponding Laplace transforms of those functions. We're only going to look at a few cases here, starting with scaling and superposition. Scaling and superposition just means that you can add different terms in time. And the transform of those terms is the equivalent to the sum of their transforms. Imagine you have two functions of time and you already know their transforms, such as the unit step and the unit ramp. Now imagine that we want to take the transform of this quantity, which is the sum of those two. That says that the transform is simply the sum of the separate transforms, 1 over s and 1 over s squared. And then there's one additional twist, which is here we're multiplying by 2. And the scaling property says that we can also multiply 2 for the transform. Similarly, if you had a uh, Laplace transform, you can also use linearity to go backwards, where here the, we can recognize this is equivalent to 4 times the unit step function, and then we have a unit ramp function. So scaling and superposition have already been used throughout differential equations, and when we use Laplace transforms, nothing changes. We can still use those properties. Let's move back to the table and examine another property, which is convolution. Convolution says that you can take the product of two transfer functions, and in the time domain, it's equivalent to this strange integral here called convolution. We've already used the product of two uh, Laplace transforms by multiplying x of s times u of s to get x of s to solve a differential equation, where this is the transfer function, and then this is the input. And the implication here is that this is equivalent to this integral where the terms in the integral, integral would be h of t, which if you call is simply the impulse response multiplied by the input to the function. This integral is actually not that easy to compute, but it's very useful as a way to understand uh, how to solve differential equations. So let's look at an example. Here's a differential equation we've used many times before with the transfer function given. But now let's apply a different input, u of t, along with zero initial conditions. Now, u of s, we can find on the table. This is just going to be 1 over s plus 2. So if we were to use regular transform methods, we would just need to multiply h of s times u of s. And then if you take the inverse Laplace transform, that'll give you x of t. Now, what convolution says is that there's yet another way to do the same thing, which is to for perform the integral of h of t, which is the impulse response. If we take the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 1, that gives us e to the negative 1t. This is h of t. And then we need to multiply by u of t, which is e to the negative 2. And then the integral says wherever you see t, you actually want to substitute in substitute in t minus the dummy variable tau. Now admittedly, this integral does not look terribly easy to evaluate. And in fact, we don't evaluate it very often. But this still provides us a lot of useful insight on how to solve differential equations. So the idea is we can solve the differential equation for any kind of input, whatever the waveform, by using convolution integral and by having knowledge of the impulse response for a system. The derivative property is especially useful for solving differential equations with non-zero initial conditions. And we've already used uh, the multiplication of the transfer function against the input in order to do that. But things are different if you have non-zero initial conditions. And in fact, you have to use the derivative pr property. So in order to do that, uh, here's the property again. And it says that given a function f of t, if you need its, the transform of its derivative, 
you need to multiply the transform of the function itself and then you have to subtract its initial condition and that's demonstrated right here so if we were to take the Laplace transform of x dot this says that we would need s times x of s minus x of zero that's all here and then 4x would just give us 4x of s where this is actually again using the uh, superposition property secondly on the right hand side we just need 4 times u of s where u of s is just going to be uh, the Laplace transform of the unit step function so if I collect some terms here what I end up with is s plus 4 and then I'm going to move the initial condition to the right hand side x of 0 and that's going to be added to 4 times 1 over s so we can solve for x of s that's going to be equal to 1 over s plus 4 multiplied by the initial condition plus 4 times 1 over s times s plus 4 now we're not going to actually show you the full partial fraction expansion for that but you can see that you would have terms a over s plus b over s plus 4 and then I already know the answer to this uh, it's going to be 1 e to the negative 1 t plus 1 e to the negative 4 t another way you can think of this whole solution is that this term here is equivalent to the step response that we found before with zero initial conditions and then this is the free response meaning no input but non-zero initial conditions and then we're using superposition to combine these two if you recall in the time domain we've already used superposition many times in the past same is true in the Laplace domain this is a summary of what we've done so far we looked at the Laplace transform linearity property and said that that's useful for going both backwards and forwards in the transform tables. We also talked about how you can solve a differential equation with zero initial conditions just by multiplying the transfer function of the system against the input. But in the time domain, that's equivalent to taking this integral that's called the convolution integral. And it's uh, another useful way that you can solve uh, equations for arbitrary inputs. We also looked at the derivative property and said that this is useful for solving differential equations with non-zero initial conditions. And we said that you can look at the, you can actually use both of these properties together to find the response for zero initial conditions, a free response with non-zero initial conditions, and then the sum of these two is going to be the same as the transform of the sum of the two.